Hi everyone, David here from DavidDumeAudio.com and in this video I wanted to do a redesign of the Expanding Melter from Borderlands 3. Now if you don't know what that is, uh, the Expanding Melter is actually just another gun inside of the Borderlands 3 video game. Um, and uh, what I decided to do is just kind of take the video, uh, a video from the using that gun that I found on YouTube, strip the audio, and then basically do a redesign of it. It's not exactly a redesign, it's not like, I wasn't trying to copy it exactly, but I was taking inspiration from it. And so what I like to do in this video is just show you my redesign and break down layer by layer how I created it so that uh, hopefully you can learn how to do that for yourself. Uh, like I said before, my name is David. If you're new here, I like to create sound effects. And if you also want to learn how to create sound effects and you want to become a sound designer, then I have a free little gift for you. It is my five layering techniques for creating new sound effects. And it's a it's a guide that I put together. It's a free PDF, uh, just outlining five different layering techniques that I have used and I've seen uh, other people use for creating sound effects. So um, anyways, it's gonna be absolutely free. The links will be in the description. All right, that's it for now. Let's jump into our video and get started. All right, so what I'd like to do first to start is to just play the original. Um, so this is, like I said before, I got this little video on YouTube here. So I'll play the original from the video up here, and then I'll go play mine, and then we'll kind of break it down layer by layer, see how I created it, and um, yeah, we'll go from there. So this is the original. All right, so that's the original, and now let's hear my version here. Now I'm just going to put on one little plugin that I had uh, on just to kind of match the panning of the gun for the original. Now let's have a listen to it. All right, so that is my redesign of it. Obviously not exactly the same, um, but I think it still it fits the character of the gun. So, um, so why don't we actually just go in and see how I started to design this and we'll do it layer by layer. So why don't we start with just the reload. Um, and you'll see here, I, what I did is for the original, I actually cut the reload here so I could just isolate it and then just listen to this portion of it so I can see what sound it's making and, um, and, then, and then figure out how I can replicate that for myself. So this is what it sounds like. Right, so what I'm hearing is a few things. It's mostly, um, some sort of a mechanical sound, uh, obviously something metal like that. And then I also hear like very faintly a uh, some sort of uh, synth sound or uh, electronic sound that's kind of rising in pitch. So it's very faint, it's kind of in the background, but it, it's there. So so that's what I was going for when I was recreating that. So here are, are my redesign layers. I actually had three of them, so let's play them together. And as you can tell, mine is a bit louder and it's not so mechanical. It's a lot more sci-fi, I guess, because I'm using more synths and sound. So let's see how I created that. So let's the first layer here was actually, um, my go-to was to find a mechanical sound, and this is the sound I found. Right, and this is just some mechanical sounds that I created from before. If you guys actually are interested in knowing how I created these mechanical sounds, um, I actually made a video about it. I'll put it in the cards right now so that you can see it and go check it out there if you are interested in seeing how I made this. But yeah, so just some easy mechanical sound. I kind of just shortened it because it was quite a bit longer. And then I just did a little fade at the end. And you can see here, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm aiming to match the sound of the original right here. Right, the length of the original. So that's what I did here. Once I had that in place, um, then what I did is I wanted to add that that, that electronic sound that was kind of rising in pitch. So the first thing I went to is I got this uh, drill um, sound that I recorded. And this is just a, I think it was a hammer drill or something like that, that I had uh, recorded uh, at my house. And then, so this is the recording of it. And then what I did is I put on here manipulator, which is right here. And then I did a few things. So one, the first thing I, I did is I, I put the, I wanted to, the pitch to go up. So that's what I did with the format here. And so if we listen to that, you can hear go up. Uh, and then well, it, what I also added is a few harmonics, a few lower harmonics. So it was at negative two, so and down like this. And then I also added some the alternator, and that's what gives it that kind of buzzing sound. So right now it's just processing it a little bit more. It's more of a taste thing than anything because it's not adding too much. You'll see on the next one it actually does it quite a bit more, if I'm not mistaken. So that's the sound there that I was going for. So now together these two. Okay, 
And then the last one I had is this layer here, which is a very similar thing that I did with this electronic drill sound, except this is a riser that I just created and I just kind of chopped it up, uh, put this section in here and let's see, actually maybe I can turn off these here. So that that is the riser sound, right? It's just a really little, small portion of it that I cut out and just added a fade on. And then I did the same idea here with manipulator. So I had the format uh, going up here. I also had the pitch going up. And the smoothing, though that was kind of a mistake, but I mean, I just slept there and it kind of worked. And then same idea here. So I had the harmonics. I wanted more higher pitched harmonics, so 3.5, so if I put that. This is what it sounds like, but higher up. Right, you get more of that bubbling sound, which is great. Then alternator again here. You get more of that engine sound, but with the alternator on. Right, it just adds more of a motor-esque sound, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, it's just more processed. Sounds good to me. That's I put it on there. I liked it, so it worked. Uh, so that's the reload sound. Nothing too crazy or too complex. So um, that is it there. So I'll just take that off here. And that's that. Okay, so next is the actual gunshot. And the gunshot itself is these layers right here. So I have six layers for the gunshot that I use. So let's go through these one by one. Uh, sorry, so this is the reload. So I actually only had five layers for the gunshot. Okay, so the first one is this one here. And let's have a listen. Now this was, it's really soft by the way. Um, and I, I made it like that because uh, I actually started with this as my main layer. And then I, I kind of, as I went and started uh, adding other uh, layers on top and doing other processing, I, I didn't want that to be the main layer of, of my sound anymore. So that's why you don't really hear it anymore. It's probably not even necessary in, in, the, in the gunshot itself. Uh, like I could probably get rid of it. Like if I solo these, I mute just this one. So you, you can't even tell, you can barely hear it. But anyways, I'm just showing you because this is this was kind of my starting point, even though it ended up being nothing, uh, this was my starting point for the gunshot. Uh, after that, um, now that I, this this layer here was kind of the the sci-fi element to my gunshot. So I just wanted to have an idea of of, of the, the, the direction I was going with. Once I had that, then I was able to add other layers on top of it. So the next layer that I added, uh, once I had this, is I knew I wanted something more mid-range, so that's why I added this layer here. Now I was going for something more laser-esque. So that's how I, why I added this one. You'll also notice uh, not much processing is actually happening here. The only thing I'm really doing is using track spacer a lot because I want to balance out each layer between each other. So for this track spacer, I wanted to make sure that as this layer was playing, uh, this layer would still punch through and would not be masked by this layer. So if I play it, so I want this laser layer to have to go th to come out and come through, especially in the top range, which is why you'll see I brought down the high cut so that it doesn't, so that it can come through in the higher sections for higher frequencies. And then the base, I want it to be ducked by this layer because I want to, this layer to come out. So that's how this, this came about. And, um, yeah, so that, that was this layer. Next layer was this one right here. Again, I just wanted something to complement this layer here. So something, again, more mid-range, but with a different kind of character. Again, same idea here. I put on track spacer just so it doesn't mask any of the other layers. Okay, next I had uh, more of a, this is where I think the, the body of the sound is where the laser is. So let's hear, listen to this one. Yeah, so this is um, this is that really high pitched laser. So the other two layers were more um, more like the body of the sound. They were more mid frequency range, right? You still have that laser sound, but this one was really the high pitch frequency that I was going for, and it really had that high pitch frequency right at the beginning, and then it also has the tail. So that's what this one here is doing. And then finally, we have this layer here, which is this. And this is uh, just the kick of the sound. This is this is the punch. This is where you get the 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 hit in your chest sound. So like if I was gonna take this off and just play the rest, uh, it would still sound good. Like you'll see. 
It still sounds good. It's just, it's missing that hit. And then when I put it in, you just get that hit, that, that thump and that hit in your chest using this layer here. So that's, that's what this layer is really doing. All right. So that's it. It's a really simple uh, design. Uh, I'm kind of just breaking them down by layers, uh, starting with this one and then kind of adding layers on top of it with different, uh, that are doing different things to the sound. So, um, yeah, so that's it for now. Uh, the next thing I wanted to show kind of quickly is just kind of how I created these layers because um, what I did is most of these I actually just created within Faceplant. So for example, I have here. This is like where I did my thump layer. So what I would do for these is I import inside of Faceplant, I create this patch where I have a sampler and then I just have a bunch of filters that are getting uh, modulated by um, this LFO. And this LFO is the transient, that is the, the LFO I'm using for the transient. So I'm applying this LFO to the pitch here, and then I'm applying the same LFO to the cutoff of each of these filters. So you'll see everything is moving kind of fast. Like these parameters here are moving fast, the cutoffs, because it's all with this LFO. And this LFO is going really fast because I want it to be the transient right at the beginning. So I want it to, to move really fast. And all I did is I imported these long files. I call them, you know, my sampling design, sound design files. These are just long files that I created. They're just, um, they're just a bunch of wacky sounds that I try to create. Um, and there's, and I try to make them as long as possible and just be creative with them so that then afterwards I can just import it into stuff like this and then kind of scan through them and see if I can find little tidbits that are really interesting. So that's how I created this sound here. And I also added here, you can see a transient shaper. Uh, dispersor just adds a bit of bass and then some distortion. Right, and with that, that's how I created my thump, the thump portion of the sound. Here I have another sample. Again, you'll see here, it's the same idea. So what I have here is uh, my sampler up here. And then uh, same idea here, I have my LFO that's mo uh, modulating the pitch here, the, fr the uh, cutoffs for all these filters. And that's pretty much it. And then after that, I have this analog waveform here. So this analog waveform is actually outside of the output. So th you're not hearing this. It's actually, I'm, I'm, I was using it to modulate the phase, but in, in this patch, I didn't. But just so you're, you know why this up here, I can actually probably turn this off. Yeah, it's not actually doing anything right now. But as you can see, like this is how I created my the, the, this patch again. So here, I used a different um, uh, LFO preset that I created for the pitch and the uh, cutoffs, and it just has a, a slower like decay so that it sounds more like this laser sound, right? And I did the same thing here. I would just scan through my file. Right, and I can get these cool um, sci-fi sounds. Um, uh, one of the things I like to do is I go, I like to have my unison on, and I go in here and I try to pick different presets and see how they sound, because they're all going to sound a bit different here. Right, and then another thing I can do is reverse. So right now everything's playing forward and forward motion, but if I uh, press loop, now I can I have the option to reverse it. So now I can just, again, pick a same, same file, and then I, it'll play backwards. So you just have different sounds to choose from. Right, and that's how I created each of my layers inside of, uh, of, inside of the gun. Right, you can already tell, like I'm just scanning quickly and like not knowing where it might sound good. I'm just scanning, scanning to see like um, what kind of sounds I can create and already I, like I can find these really nice sounds. So that's how I created each of these layers. Once I had them in there, then all, I, all, all it is is a matter of, of layering them up, uh, of offsetting the, uh, the transient just a little bit. As you can see here, they're not all at the exact same time, starting time. They're pretty darn close though. And then um, just adding some fades and then just, just balancing them using, I like to use track spacer just to make sure that everything comes through in the frequency that I meant it for it to come through. And then once I have that in place, um, that's pretty much it for the, for the sound design. Um, I'll show you the last plugin that I used, which was a recenter here by Boom Library. So recenter, I was using this kind of to, to place it in, in the uh, stereo field. So if I actually take this off and I play through my sounds, this is what it sounds like. 
right? It sounds okay. It sounds it sounds good. It sounds like everything's right in the center, which is fine. Um, but if you listen to the original, it's actually a bit off center. So if I play this, like it sounds like it's a bit on the right side, which makes sense because the gun is is a bit on the right side of the player. Um, so that's that's what I was doing with this plugin here. Is I just uh, I just narrowed the width a little bit so that the gun's more focused, and then I put off I I, I put it off a little bit towards the right. And now it should sound like this. Again, minor details, but it just it just helps to sell the sound effect a little bit more. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. This is how I created the uh, sound effect for this gun. All right, so that's everything. I hope you found that video useful and valuable, and um, hopefully it helps you to, to get your creative juices flowing and maybe have some ideas for creating your own uh, gun sound effect if you wanted to. So uh, that's, it. that's it for now. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I always do my best to read them and answer them uh, whenever I can. And um, yeah, just a reminder to grab that free PDF, uh, Five Layering Techniques Guide that I created uh, to help you create better sound effects. So I think that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.